My name is AJ Aguilar and I work in the Koshi lab. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you, I've worked there for almost two years now, and I'll talk to you a little bit about the two projects I've been on and just what our lab does in general. Uh, so the title of this talk is Toxoplasma gondii, the brain and the immune system. Uh, and first, just a little bit about my PI, because I feel like you should acknowledge the people who get you where you are. Uh, Dr. Anita Koshi is an awesome mentor. She's a medical doctor, so she's a physician scientist here at the U of A who uh, works in the Department of Neurology when she's not doing research. Uh, so our lab in total, in general, studies Toxoplasma gondii, which is a single-celled intracellular parasite that persists in the central nervous system of warm-blooded animals. You might have heard of this uh, parasite in the context of cats, uh, because that's how it's spoken about a lot in the media, but there's many, many different connections with other human health um, topics. So something that's interesting about Toxoplasma gondii is that it infects an estimated up to a third to an eighth of the human population on Earth, which is pretty interesting because you look around and often, maybe in times before this, there were more than three or eight people around you. Uh, yet we see hardly any cases where chronic infections lead to any symptoms or death in patients. About 99% of cases are asymptomatic. And in the research world, there's three canonical strains that differ in how severely they sicken mice, cleverly named one, two, and three. More on that later. A little bit uh, about the image to the right there, that is actually based on the Cree recombinase system that I'll also talk about a little bit later, but those are parasite cysts in brain tissue. Um, so one of the things that I'm actually working on this summer I wanted to lead with is demonstrating an, how efficiently a new recombinase system works. So uh, essentially what we had before was called a t Cree recombinase system, where every time the toxophilin, which is an effector protein excreted by Toxoplasma gondii upon infection, uh, would reach a neuron, we would have a recombination undergo and they would fluoresce green. Um, my new strain of parasites is supposed to be a different protein that will only show if they were for sure infected, not just interacted with a parasite. And like I said, this helps us visualize uh, uh, infected and interacted neurons, which can then help us quantify using brain sections. Um, so here's just an example of that. You can see in the blue, we have a neuronal stain for um, regular neurons throughout the brain. And then the green, we have what we call TINs, which are toxoplasma injected neurons. Um, and those are obviously the green neurons that fluoresce and have interacted with toxo. And you can see in the red highlighted, you can see small cysts. Um, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but here, um, those are the cysts that the parasites form when they come in. So I'm demonstrating the efficiency of our new recombinase system right now, or attempting to. Uh, in the past, what we've also done is worked with things like aging and Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's was uh, the project that I was on last year what essentially other labs and our own have found in toxoplasma research throughout the past couple of years is that of the strains I mentioned earlier, the three canonical strains of toxo, we found that when you infect a genetically modified Alzheimer's disease mouse model, so these are mice that are set to develop the amyloid beta plaques that are characteristic of Alzheimer's disease. When you infect those mice uh, with the different types of toxoplasma, we actually found that type two toxoplasma significantly decreased the amount of amyloid beta plaque in the brain. And my project last summer was to quantify exactly how much it did that and how and why. So we're still working on that portion of what's in the lab, but that was essentially my project last year. And we quantified using B1, which is a qPCR gene that we can read um, that is toxoplasma specific. So if we uh, examine the brain tissue for B1, we were able to get an idea of how much Toxoplasma is actually in the brain. Um, the next portion of this project would be to actually do Western blots and find out how this is altering the processing of the amyloid beta or Alzheimer's plaques themselves. Uh, with that, I would like to open the floor up to questions or anything else about our research. Thank you.